Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer. Today, doing something slightly different. So I'm in my studio and the, no light. I'm using available light. The light is coming from the window. And the reason it looks like this is because I'm trying out some new lenses. My subscribers, my patrons, my viewers are incredibly generous to me. And um, one chap in particular, I mentioned him in a video the other day, uh, his name is Chris, and he goes under the name of G Ramps. Very, very nice chap. And he, he is retired, used to do lots of stills photography and had some wonderful lenses, camera lenses for DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. Um, and he said, He'd heard me talking about trying to get a long lens because I wanted to be able to, when I'm out and about, point to things and say, oh, see that in close up. And he says, it looks like you've got a Canon camera. Um, I'd like to donate them to you. And I said, oh, that's so kind. Well, he came over earlier in the week and he, he gave them to me. And um, now I have two cameras. One is a, a Canon and one is a Panasonic. The camera that I'm filming on today is a Canon. Uh, the one that I often go out and about with is my Panasonic and I'm getting in the post a, an adapter for these lenses. So one, this is a technical thing. I know not everybody will be into all of this, but there's some pretty pictures to follow. So, you know, bear with me a second or two. Um, so I'll tell you what the lenses are and all of that in a second. So um, the Panasonic is a full frame camera. The camera I'm filming on now is what they call APS-C, which is not quite full frame, but it's not micro four thirds. Now to a lot of people, this will mean nothing, but to some people, they'll know what I'm talking about. So I'm trying to tread where you can all understand what I'm getting at. So I'm not gonna go into the technical dif differences on all of these cameras, except to say, that in order to use these lovely lenses, and they're good quality lenses, you need to have an adapter to use them with one camera. It slightly changes the focal length, so you use them in a slightly different way. Um, and with the native camera, the Canon camera, they just click on and they work well. One camera has good stabilization on it, the other camera doesn't, so I either have to put it on a tripod like I have today, the Canon camera, or I put it on the gimbal. The Sussex Border Walk videos are filmed on a gimbal which take the DSLR camera, my Canon camera, um, and so I have a different style of filming with that. And when I'm doing my walks and general stuff, it's a different camera, it's my Panasonic camera, which generally is on a, a, a small tripod that I hold and then I put it down and, and cut uh, it, the video that way. I work really fast because I turn my videos really round each day. So I whiz out, I go and film something. Um, I have to get all the filming done. I come back, I then put it together in the edit and then it's ready for the next day. And I have been criticized sometimes because the exposure hasn't been right or something, you know, on the technicalities. But it is quite hard to rush out in a very short space of time to put these videos on a daily basis. People will always find fault. Anyway, never mind all that nonsense. So here am I um, filming with what's known as a Sigma lens. This is one of the lenses uh, that um, G Ramps or Chris has given me. And it's a lovely lens because what it means is I can film in quite low light as I am at the moment with the window. Unfortunately, it affects my glasses when you get the occasional glare where you can't quite see my eyes, which is why I'm trying to sort of keep looking that way but the background is somewhat out of focus. Now this is called separation. Uh, some people call it bokeh. It's the separation that you're exposing for the subject so that you focus on the subject and not the background. It makes for pretty pictures, especially when you're filming um, uh, plants and insects and creatures and things because you want them to pop. You want people to be able to see just that and not really the other things. So let me quickly tell you some of the lenses that I've got that I was given. So this is a Sigma lens and I think it's 18mm 
to 35, I think that's right, um, without actually getting up and looking at the lens. I can't remember exactly. Um, so there's a little bit of zoom in there, um, very much for everyday sort of stuff, that kind of thing. Um, there's a macro lens, a 100 millimeter macro lens, and that is really for close-ups of small things. Um, it does zoom in into the distance, but it's fixed. You see, it's a prime, prime lens at 100 mil. So you would use that for plants and uh, for little animals and insects and creatures and um, perhaps small models and things like that. Um, it's a great macro lens. And you'll see that I'm here using it for a whole host of different um, reasons and different things to look at. And it's a beautiful lens, I have to say, because the detail and the crispness is really great. And it was lovely to go out, as I did this morning, and film a few bits and pieces on it. The other lens, the lens that uh, initially started off this conversation and this amazing gift is the long lens, called a long lens, because you can zoom into a long, a long way. And it also is quite lengthy in lens is the 100 to 300 millimeter. You can get much longer, of course you can, but they get bigger and um, less light can get into them because you've got this long tube where each lens is magnifying things up. Uh, this is probably plenty. All of these lenses, good quality, but they are quite heavy to carry about. Um, and that's one of the problems when you're working really fast. But with a long lens, it means you can see further away it also gives you a different feel. Um, it makes things compact against each other. So when you film something on a long lens, it may be a long way away, but you may not know it's a long way away. But if you have stuff in the foreground, you get things that are slightly out of focus and then those things behind which are in focus. It depends how you're focusing, but you get this sort of um, compression of the image. It, it works very well in, in many different circumstances and it, it, it takes a bit of a while to, you know, utilize these lenses in, an, in a way that is really, really good. Of course, the principal thing is that you're filming things which you, in a, in a lens like the one I'm filming now, is just too wide and it's a, it would appear as a tiny dot. Very often I'll say things like, oh look, you can just see the spire of such and such a church. Well, if I've got the long lens with me, I can then take a shot where you see the spire in a bit more close up. Uh, and that's really useful. The question is though, it's the portability of all of this. It's all very well having these wonderful lenses, but when I put them in a bag, uh, very often you'll see these photographers when they're doing photo videos on YouTube, you'll see them with a big haversack and they're carrying this bag of lenses around and they change their lenses. It's all glass and it is actually quite heavy. Uh, there are a lot of lighter lenses coming in uh, and they're usually okay, they're okay. And the lenses that I've got on here are okay and pretty much for YouTube, they work really well. But these specialist lenses can add certain things, especially the, mi the uh, macro lens where you get the absolute wonderful clarity and detail of small plants and I'm often doing heritage landscape and nature so that's where I think it will come to its own. Ordinarily in an environment like this I would use lights to make it just a little bit more um, under my control rather than just the light that's coming in because in this country our weather changes every minute and I'm surprised actually that the sun hasn't come out it's a bit of a cloudy day and that any second the sun will come out and every th the light in here will change. And I would probably have put in a fill light here rather than the main light. So I know sometimes on my videos people say, oh, when I've been filming in, in side, they say, oh, nice lighting. And that's because I do actually spend a bit of time because it's all about making it look good for the audience. You don't want to know how long it took, what equipment was used, you just want to sit back and enjoy it and that's what I try to do. But because I had been given these lenses, I wanted to go out and try them. Of course, doing that takes up my time, which means I wouldn't ordinarily have a video. So today's video has been me utilizing these lenses 
and uh, trying them out and sharing that with you. And also a big thank you to um, Chris for sending them in. But people do send in, they send their patronage, which I'm so thrilled. Thank you so much. And, and people do send in that and it comes in very regularly and it certainly comes in very handy so that I can keep making these videos. I'm trying to improve the quality. I'm trying to keep them uh, coming out every day so that when you wake up or whenever you watch your videos, there's something interesting. And I'm also trying to keep the variety. If they were all walks, if they were all about trees, if they were all about the same thing, um, I, I would get bored and I'm sure you would too. So I'm trying to bring to you lots of different things, all within the overall bracket of exploring and principally heritage landscape and nature. But of course I'm doing my story and uh, living on my own and the walks and and hopefully more in the van and visiting places but it's it all comes under the same umbrella i'm just hoping i can keep the uh, photography side of it absolutely lovely so that you can kick back and know when you get a bald explorer video generally they're all right to look at Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed some of the pretty pictures. I hope they've, uh, it's been great. Thanks, Chris, for sending those in. And thanks to everybody who comments and likes, shares, uh, and who subscribes, really. And everybody who comes back, it's so, it's so thrilling to know that little me can produce something that many people find um, interesting and enjoyable to watch. So thank you very much indeed. Anyway, that's it from me. You don't want me rattling on any longer. Um, I'll be out and about as ever. Um, I'm sure we've got some more exciting walks coming up and the great outdoors. We've had some fantastic weather, so I want to make the most of it. Till next time, take care, look after yourselves and bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.